On January 7th, 1839, the history of visual representation changed forever. On that day, people first saw photographs. They were the invention of a French painter and printmaker, Louis-Jacques Mondet Daguerre. He was a bit of a showman and entrepreneur as well as an artist. He was the proprietor of the diorama, a famous spectacle in Paris consisting of theatrical sets and lighting effects. And he had been working for many years on a way of capturing the fleeting image that he saw in a camera obscura. Daguerre's photographs were different from the ones we're used to now. Each was a one-of-a-kind photograph on a highly polished, silver-plated sheet of copper. It was sensitized in iodine, exposed in the camera, and then developed over mercury fumes, the health hazards of being an artist in the 19th century. In certain light, all you see is your own reflection. It's a mirrored surface. And then when the light is just right, it snaps into view, and it's an incredibly sculptural and present uh, view of the subject. Daguerre knew that once he revealed the steps in, in his process, there would be no controlling it. So rather than take a patent on it, he negotiated with the French government until August of 1839, obtaining for himself a government annuity, uh, an income for life, and in exchange, placing the rights to the, to the daguerreotype process in the public domain. The process spread so rapidly throughout the world that by December of 1839, a caricaturist, Théodore Morisset, would lampoon the fad. It was a world taken over by photographers, photographing from balloons, uh, having people line up outside their studios to have their portraits made. There were reproductive engravers hanging themselves from gallows because they were out of work. The daguerreotype made portraiture possible for almost everyone. People who never would have dreamt of having their portrait painted could go to the portrait studio and have a daguerreotype made. They could leave their likeness to loved ones and to posterity. And it was a huge rage in Paris in the 1840s and 50s. People lined up to have their, their portraits made. Many of those came out rather stiffly, and part of that had to do with the long exposures and the, the process itself. People sat in specially designed posing chairs that had a, a metal rod coming up the back, and it held their, their head immobile so that they would uh, not blur the image during the, during the exposure. And that itself became the butt of jokes. There are a number of cartoons that show people screwed into vices, their heads with big screws going into their ears to keep them from, from moving. Uh, this kind of case grew out of the, the tradition of the painted miniature, uh, a small leather case, and it meant that the, the photograph was protected behind glass in a little mat, and it kept the delicate surface of the, of the daguerreotype from being damaged. In France, this format was less popular, and most daguerreotypes were framed. They were placed behind a piece of painted glass, such as this, with a little ring on the back to hang it up on the wall, or just placed behind a paper mat and glass and placed in a simple frame. Portraiture was the principal subject of daguerreotypy, but not the only one, and artists quickly took up the new medium as a new uh, means of expression and as an aid to their work in other media as a model for painters and, and draftsmen. Similarly, scientists took up the new medium, attached the camera to microscopes and to telescopes, and harnessed its ability to capture every detail of, of what was placed before the lens. Explorers took daguerreotype equipment with them and enabled people back in Paris to sit in their armchairs and travel the world in a, in a kind of virtual fashion. In the 1840s and 1850s, millions of daguerreotypes were made, but the process gradually declined in the 1850s as it was replaced by photography on paper. It was a process that didn't have the, the magic and the absolute precision of the daguerreotype, but it had the great advantage of reproducibility. One could make multiple positive prints from a single negative, whereas the daguerreotypes were each unique, one of a kind.